This video is about using the Miller Coors Home Draft system for home home brewing, and I'm going to come cover all these topics. We'll start off with uh, just an overview to show you sort of why the um, why the system is sort of cool. First of all, you can just toss it in your regular refrigerator. You don't have to have a special kegerator or anything like that, which is nice. Um, and you can. Um, open up a beer or you know take your first pour of a beer and um, take your last pour off of that same keg a month later and it should taste as good the um, the last the last pour is the first pour and you can naturally carbonate in three bottles say take a five gallon batch and put them in three six liter bottles and that comes out to about 4.8 gallons so it's pretty much a five gallon batch so let's look at the equipment here this is the tap and uh, you can see it has a weighted end on the left side there and on the on the right side is the the tap and the regulator is built right in so that what you were looking at there was the regulator side and this is what's inside the um, the tap there's a little regulator in there and uh, it's not perfect but uh, it does a pretty good job once the first part of the cartridge is, is uh, expended and on the bottom there there's a pressure release valve and that usually doesn't uh, isn't a problem as long as you got a little bit of head space in your bottle it it usually doesn't uh, doesn't uh, activate so um, this is basically it you got um, a crimp in there and that's what opens and closes the tap and this is where the co2 cartridge is and there's a gasket in there and that's that's tends to be the the issue um, and we'll see some more of that later normally the left cartridge is the one that comes with it it's got sort of a square neck on it the right or the the silver one is um, an eight gram cartridge, which I'll show you how I uh, modify uh, the the uh, system to allow for that. The bottles um, from the Miller Home Draft are you know take a standard 38 millimeter cap, and also the um, the uh, three liter bottles from the Dollar Tree also have that same neck same cap 38 millimeters and this is the the original true tap draft bottle with the bottom is rounded like that for for strength and the neck is also 38 millimeters uh, cap slightly larger uh, in that measurement but but basically they're all the same so what do you do to bottle into these bottles well uh, first you know nothing new here you uh, have to sanitize them we're, we're presuming they're already clean and you're just sanitizing here. So I just uh, take a little bit of star sand and roll it around uh, in there. Um, and you only have to do this to three bottles so it's nothing like you know having to do this to 50 bottles in a 50 12 ounce bottles. Um, it's pretty simple and here's the same method on the, uh, the pop bottle. And if you just buy the pop at the Dollar Tree you can just dump it out and rack right into it. I don't even think you need to sanitize because that pop is going to be sanitized already. So how to bottle carbonates? Nothing new here. Basically measure out, calculate your um, your bottling sugar that you need. And uh, I'm just going to show you this technique because I think it's a little bit unique to um, to bottling in three bottles. I take the sugar and I put it in this tea kettle, which you know you could boil it on the stove, whatever. I just happen to use this because it's convenient to pour out of when you're when you're ready to use the sugar. Um, once it gets um, you know has boiled up, I usually wait for it to cool a little bit, and then I pour it into three um, plastic uh, cups um, or anything you got that you can see through, because you need to make them about as equal as you can get them. Because uh, the, the the total calculation of sugar, by by the way, was for exactly um, 18 liters of beer. For that, you know, whatever. And then you take the um, the bottling sugar, and I just pour it right into the sanitized and drained six liter bottle. And then um, I'm uh, I'm ready to rack. And so I, uh, you know, in this case, it's a pretty simple task. I just uh, rack into the um, into the three different bottles. Um, sometimes I'll, uh, I'll rack into two and force carbonate one. We'll see that a little bit later. But generally speaking, this is the same process you would do if you had a whole bunch of 12 ounce bottles. You would you'd rack into them except for that you would go from a bottling bucket that had your sugar stirred into it. In this case, no need to do that. I put a balloon on the top to, to detect any leaks in the caps. The caps tend to be 
uh, trouble. <laughs> but the, the, the Dollar Tree caps are the best that I've found. So what if you wanted to force carbonate one? Well, you'd calculate your sugar a little differently. Say you wanted to do two with sugar and one without. That's what I usually do. Um, but you wouldn't use bottom sugar in this one, of course. You would rack into it, put that tire stem cap on it, which now I'm not going to show you how to make that here, but um, basically once you have the tire stem cap, that allows you to add um, CO2. So um, you end up uh, taking your uh, bike tire filler and, um, and adding CO2 to it and shaking it. And I'm not going to show you... All, all the details of this but basically what you do is you you keep uh, adding co2 and shaking it and in this case um, you you would have to leave yourself some some head space so you could do that um, squeeze the bottle a lot and and get yourself some head space okay so um, now we're into um, I mentioned before using uh, a balloon to detect um, uh, a leak. and what we're going to do now is is we're going to practice our, our technique for knowing how carbonated something is um, and it's uh, it's it's this is not essential but basically if you do if you learn how to do this you'll be able to sort of tell um, how uh, how your bottle conditioning is coming so if that read 17 pounds or something like that you could look that up in the chart and you could say oh at 17 pounds if it was 46 degrees it's you know two point whatever uh, um, uh, volumes of CO2. Now this is a case where it's warm, it's, it's, it, so I have to use a little bit different section of the chart, but in this case it looks like I'm not there yet. Th those are only been bottle carbonating for a few days now, so they're not ready. But I could tell that. Um, in this section we're gonna, just going to look at uh, a short bit. You can, you can go into that YouTube uh, link there if you want to see more. But these bottles are are tough but they're not quite indestructible and um, if you're if you're naturally carbonating you just want to keep an eye out for this for the bowed bottom not that's that's the new strong tapadraft bottle but but uh, go look at that video if you're interested in uh, in monitoring that so um, when you're ready to tap um, you know after uh, you know your your uh, few weeks of bottle carbonation um, you need to sanitize up your tap and I, I keep an extra uh, Dollar Tree bottle around just for just for this purpose, so I don't you you know I have a, you know an extra one that I that I uh, can use for sanitizing, which is uh, a nice nice thing to have. So when you're um, you've chilled your bottle already, that's it's uh, not stated here. I don't pull it out of the fridge, but basically you've chilled your bottle. It's nice and cold before you tap it. And then I use a strap wrench because those some of those caps are pretty pretty difficult to um, to get to get a grip on, with, especially when they're wet. And then I just take the cap off and uh, drop the tap in. And um, you know probably not too much oxygen get in there. Uh, you know it's mostly CO2 being forced out at the time. Sometimes it's foaming right over, and you got to hurry to get that tap on there. Do you want to tighten it? It goes down to a stop. Um, there's a stop where it can't be tightened too tightly. So now um, what you want to do is you want to add your CO2 that's going to drive your beer out of the, of the keg. And there's this little gasket in there. This is an important piece. This, is, this is, tends to be a, 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 a problem. So if you're using originally sized CO2 cartridges, you could uh, add a little bit of um, uh, keg lube on a Q-tip there like I showed, and then insert it into the tap. Um, but since you know, right now we we're sort of out of order a little bit. I'm I'm not, I haven't tapped this yet. I haven't sanitized it. This is sort of out of order. But but basically, you don't want to go. You don't want to twist past where those green arrows are on a different thread. So otherwise, you'd be piercing the uh, CO2, which you don't want to do yet. So anyway, the neck on the eight gram cartridges is smaller, and so see how this one when it goes on there, it's nice and it doesn't rock around much but if you put it if you put that same gasket on an 8 gram cartridge being smaller it would rock around now what we're trying to do here is not seal anything with this tape what we're trying to do is just make it so that that gasket stays upright and doesn't get out of kilter because if it does it um, it will it, 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 it won't seat properly 
So anyway, you take a piece of tape, it should be about five millimeters. This is a little bit too wide, but I didn't go back and, uh, and, and do a new, a new, I'm trying to shoot and do this at the same time. And this is, this is a fake one anyway. I'm, there's a lot of these shots in here that I had to, I had to sort of just make, um, not, they're not production shot. I mean, it's not production beer, really. Some of them, some of them are, some of them are. But anyway, you get the tape wrapped around and then when you put this gasket on, it's it doesn't rock around as much and you stand a better chance of um, of getting it in there properly. So again, you take the keg lube and put it on there just so it slides up into the um, tap body. So now we need to have a little housing and I made that housing out of an existing 16 gram cartridge and it just so happens the 8 gram cartridge fits in it. And you gotta add these pennies to make it the right length. So, and you put this shoulder on there to make sure that it's centered because the problem tends to be when this, when you try to use an eight gram and a 16 gram slot, it's not centered properly and then it folds over the gasket and then you have a leak. So you try not to have that happen to you. So the length is about 89 and the, the original one is 87 something. So basically we're about the same um, so when you're, this is just an, a demo for, you know, when you're screwing in, that's not pierced. This is maybe where it's pierced, sealing and piercing, and you might not have to tighten it all the way, but you might. So since it's two extra millimeters longer. Um, so anyway, you insert the, um, the, uh, the whole rig <laughs> into the, into the case, uh, the, the little plastic CO2 case. And it wiggles around a little bit in there, so it makes that still makes me a little bit nervous. But hopefully, um, you'll um, I do it upright, you know, like so so that the thing is is vertical when I'm twisting this in here. And at this point, we're gonna, only going to go up until where it's one thread apart, so it's not going to seal or pierce yet. And we're going to do sealing and piercing after the first pour. So um, you pour as much beer without twisting in the cartridge. And basically you can crush the bottle a little bit. You can uh, wait and be patient and just let it dribble out into, um, into a, a gla glass, you know, and it's still perfectly good beer. It just doesn't come out very fast. And then if you can manage it while you've got the tap open and a glass underneath there, you can um, go ahead and, and uh, twist in the cartridge. So in general, when you're pouring, you want to uh, undo the lock and you also want to open the tap completely and you want to position the glass like on the front of the glass almost or the side. Small glasses you can put it right on the front of the glass. Big glasses you put it on the side like that and not the back. <laughs> now if the tap is open partially you get this little teeny stream and a whole bunch of bubbles. So that's why especially if you've got a highly carbonated beer you want to you want to jam that tap all the way open and then jam it all the way shut and you won't get very much bubbles. And if you need bubbles do that you know you can. Now, getting the last drop out, if you tilt it the way you think, it's going to all go to the front, away from the pickup, and you're not going to get beer. So if you want to get the last bit of beer out of there, it'll be pretty yeasty sometimes, but um, you want to tilt, tip it away from you. You want to actually pick up the, the front of the tap. Now, locking is very important, um, especially like, you know, you got to keep an eye on it if you got it at a party. When those two pieces of plastic align, that means it's actually locked, and you can use the, the, uh, the flag, the, t the, the lock. If you try to use the lock before it's actually clicked all the way through, it won't lock. Um, and what that note was is if you have an original tap draft, make sure you use the lock because those spontaneously open. So cleaning, of course, you know, you, you, you unscrew the tap and it makes a hiss with the CO2 and then you just rinse out the yeast. And with, when you clean the tap, keep the, the regulator side up and keep the CO2 cartridge attached, open the tap, and then run some hot water through it some warm water through it, whatever, tap water through it. And, you know, just get the, you know, I don't know if that does very much, but it does something, I suppose. This is where you actually use soap. You've got, um, you fill your bottles with the hottest water you can get out of your tap, and and then make some room for your for your OxyClean. And I just wild guessed a quarter cup. I don't know if that's right. Quarter cup per six liter. Um, and then you put the tap in. So you're going to basically be washing your tap or, or, you know, soaping up your tap at the same time you, you uh, clean your bottle. Um, tighten it on there all the way, you know, all the way. And you'll notice that the outgassing from the OxyClean will force water or, or, you know, cleaner up through 
the tap and it'll drip like that for hours. Now I didn't use, I didn't leave my CO2 cartridge attached. I should have left it detached because it can prevent water from getting in there. So um, then of course you just shake out the water and put them away. So let's talk about portability. Um, it's, it's these one of the benefits that I didn't show in the intro is that you can take this on the road. I'll show you how to make that cardboard box in that YouTube link right there if you want to if you're interested in sort of learning how I uh, how I did that. Um, but uh, take your full uh, uh, Miller Home Draft bottle and you stick it in this insulated box and it it uh, I put some you know ice in there obviously um, and uh, it it lasts for a very long. Uh, time hours and hours, you know, somebody else's keg could be warm by the time yours is still ice cold. So, this this really keeps it cold um, for you know quite a while. And it's and you can fit more ice in there if you you know I mean more ice than I showed you putting in there because I had it so that you could have ice and the whole thing inside the box. You can have it a lot more ice back there. Now I I say ice in quotes. It's not real ice. You don't want anything to leak and make the box soggy. I have a paper towel in there too to just to, you know pick up the the, the uh, condensation. So anyway, make yourself a handle and take off and ready to drink your beer. So I figured the easiest way if, um, you know, because comments in YouTube aren't too good, um, if you want to go to this uh, bit.ly link that I made for homebrew talk, um, there's a link there that I didn't start, I just participate in. It's I don't I don't really do too much at homebrew talk, but but I do participate in this link and I get notified when there are questions on it. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, go ahead and post your questions or enjoy the, the uh, use of your keg.